Today's video is gonna be all about this really cool pawn shop purchase that I made, this camera right here, as well as these two boxes of digital cameras that I purchased. I spent $950 on everything that you see here, including this sweet Sony camera. Stick with me through the end of the video and I'll go through testing, appraising, and taking sample images with all of the cameras in these boxes. And hopefully we can hit the target that I have set of $1,750. Let's get right into it. This is a Sony A6500 mirrorless camera with the 28 to 70 millimeter Sony lens. So I paid up a little bit for this camera in comparison to a lot of the untested cameras that I normally buy. I find pawn shops to occasionally be good ways to find cameras, but the deals are really few and far between. For example, I had to go to three different pawn shops to even find a camera that was worth purchasing. Um, and it took a couple hours. So definitely some investment in time uh, to find this deal. A lot of the times what I've seen is that pawn shops actually price at or above, and in some cases way, way above eBay pricing. So sometimes the deals just really aren't there. Plus I find the exorbitant fees and general predatory behavior of pawn shops in general to be pretty awful and off-putting. So it's not a main uh, source of mine, but I do occasionally go to them. Rant over. So I've sold the A6500 a number of times over the years. I believe this camera was released in 2018. It's a 24 megapixel sensor. Uh, it is a crop sensor, it's not full frame, and it does shoot 4K video. So one of the things that I've noticed of shooting with the A6500, as opposed to the earlier versions, the A6000 and A6300, is the viewfinder on this camera is really fantastic. Uh, it's got 2.3 million pixels and it's pretty representative of the actual picture that you're taking as opposed to say the camera that I'm shooting with right now, which is the Sony a7 R3. Hi there. Uh, that viewfinder, because it's a 40 plus megapixel camera, um, makes everything look a little bit pixelated and granular when you're looking through the viewfinder. It's just the inherent issue of having such a large sensor. Uh, but this is truly more representative of uh, when you're looking through the viewfinder, the actual picture or, or content that you're taking. So that's one of the things that I've noticed in shooting with this priorly. Um, let's go ahead and turn the camera on. Power's on. And it already had a battery in there and I think there's a 64 gig uh, SD card. Um, so let's go ahead and test this inside. We'll take a few pictures, make sure the flash is firing and the autofocus is working. I did already test this in the shop. We'll go ahead and take a few sample pictures. Yeah, flash fires, wow, very crisp. Yeah, that looks great. So there's one that I just took. As you can see, it's, it's super sharp, very, uh, very, very fast focus in this camera, which I really like. Takes excellent burst mode. Um, 4K video, and I don't think you're limited to 30 minute uh, shooting sessions. So um, this is a really, really great all around camera, even though it's six years old, uh, it's still quite popular. Now the lens itself is kind of a budget walk around everyday lens. It's got a pretty narrow aperture, but it's super quiet. When this 28 to 70 was released, it was the second cheapest FE Sony mount lens that uh, Sony produced. So this isn't the most expensive lens, it's an f3.5 to 5.6, and when you get to 60 millimeters plus in terms of the optical range, you're getting up to that maximum of f5.6. And frankly, when you're zoomed out that far, when you're shooting in low light, it makes it pretty challenging. But this is a great camera to use with plenty of light. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out to a shooting location uh, that's a little bit different from where I normally go. Decided to venture out today into the wilds of Southern Arizona and headed to one of the largest spring-fed ponds in the area. The first camera that we're gonna take pictures with is this Sony a6500 with the 28 to 70 millimeter lens. So let's jump right in and get started. And the shutter count of this camera, uh, I already checked uh, when I originally purchased it, is 2,300. The, the shutter actuation estimate uh, I've seen for the Sony a6500 is actually around 200,000 actuations. So tons of life left in this body. Uh, the value of the body because of the super low shutter count is going to be right around $600. If this had a shutter count closer to 100K, it would be about $500. 
So condition and shutter count definitely plays a role in the value of cameras. And the lens is going to be, it's in very good shape as well, um, is going to be a value of right around $160. So I would put this at about $760 for the kit. It's a really, really great combo to start off with and a little bit different in the way that I source from normal. Now let's get back to the roots of unboxing. All right, so we've got our next box here. If you're new here, hi, my name's Kevin. I've been buying and selling used digital cameras now full-time for seven years and even more part-time. Uh, during that period, I've sold over 25,000 digital cameras and I make videos like this to go over the variety of camera gear that I've recently purchased. And a lot of the items that I purchase, I end up selling on eBay as well as a little bit locally. Prior to selling used camera gear, uh, I was still in the camera industry. In fact, a lot closer to the source. I was actually a buyer and I worked directly with brands like Canon and Panasonic and Nikon and Samsung and bought them directly to sell on our online platform through Amazon as well as our, our six different storefronts. Unfortunately, that retailer that I worked for is now out of business like so many. RIP Circuit City. Really, Best Buy is one of the only uh, leftovers from, uh, from my time that's still around. So much of the business has moved to an online presence that retail brick and mortar stores have a really hard time keeping up. Many of the cameras in these boxes were a lot of the models that I bought directly. And now 10, 15 years later, here I am, slinging the same cams. It's funny how the world works like that. And box number two is all DSLR and mirrorless cameras. Bubble wrap for days. All right, let's start with another Sony uh, from years gone by. We have got a Sony A230 DSLR camera here. And this is, I believe, a 10 megapixel camera. Uh, I want to say this was released in 2009, 2010. And this came out right after the Sony A200, which is the Sony DSLR camera that I have sold the most of. So this is not a mirrorless camera like the camera before it. It's a digital single lens reflex camera, AKA DSLR. It still has interchangeable lenses, but the mount type is different. So you can't use this Sony lens on the Sony uh, A6500 that we looked at before, unless you have an adapter. So we've got a Sony A230 body and a Sony 18 to 70 millimeter zoom lens. Condition looks pretty good actually. Got a memory card in there. The LCD looks good. Just get that cleaned up a little bit. And this uses the Sony NP-FH50 battery, which I have here, and there is not one in here. So off to the side of the screen here, I have a little tub filled with batteries that are charged. Uh, because I sell so many different cameras, I often have at least 100 different types of batteries charged and ready to test with the cameras that I bring in. Um, so let me find the appropriate one. Here we go. It does have a little bit of wear around the tripod mount. Common. And let's make sure it's on autofocus. There's a little uh, lever here that will be autofocus or manual focus. And flip it to auto and let's turn it on. It does turn on, the menu pops up. And let's try taking a few pictures here. So what I do is make sure that the lens is moving correctly through the range and we'll test taking pictures through a variety of optical ranges and then make sure the flash works. Flash fires. And that looks good. Yeah, that looks really good actually. And when I look through the viewfinder, I'm gonna see if there's anywhere to the focus screen. And normally that doesn't affect the actual picture quality. It's just the focus screen, which is up here. And sometimes there can be dust and scratches. It's gonna be hard for me to get a picture, but sometimes there can be dust and scratches up there. And that's something that I would just note whenever I would have list this on eBay. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this outside. We'll take a few pictures with this as well. What's gonna be a little different in this video is I am going to try to take pictures with every single working camera. So you can get an idea of what the picture quality is. Um, and hopefully there's you find some benefit in that. I've shot with the A230 quite a bit over the years and I've been really happy with the, uh, the picture quality and the color accuracy. What I have noticed with shooting with the A230 is that in brighter light conditions, uh, images tend to be a little bit washed out. Also because of the image sensor size, uh, this camera does need 
adequate light to function, so in darker situations, it's gonna have a bit of a hard time as well. Another interesting tidbit is this was one of the last cameras, Sony DSLR cameras they made that didn't have live view. So you have to use that uh, viewfinder in order to take a picture, which is fine for me anyway, because I prefer to do that. So this camera's in good working condition. The value of the A230 on the used market in the United States is gonna be right around $130 if I were to pair this with a charger and a memory card. So that's a, that's a good one. This particular supplier that I bought all of these DSLR and mirrorless cameras from, they're not tested, but in general what I found is the reliability of the supplier is pretty good. So I kind of pay an average of uh, kind of in between tested and untested with the supplier. Next up, we've got a Canon Rebel T1i. Quite a bit of wear. Looks like it's been sitting around for a while, collected a little bit of dust. But physically appears to be in decent shape at least. LCD's got a little bit of wear. And there is some finish wear around the edges as well. So the T1i, I have sold hundreds of over the years. And it comes with this kit 18 to 55 EFS lens. So this is a 15 megapixel DSLR camera. Um, it was released in 2009, which was right around the height of the DSLR market and before mirrorless cameras really took the market by storm. Um, also shoots raw in all modes as opposed to just specific ones and uses any of Canon's EF and EFS lenses. There's a little bit of wear to the mount as well I didn't notice. So I'm gonna go through and clean this real quick. Normally I'll do uh, a little bit of cleaning to make sure that prior to testing that everything is looking okay. Uh, viewfinder's got quite a bit of wear. So let me go ahead and grab my cleaning supplies and I'll have a link down below uh, for some of the more common cleaning supplies that I use. I have only include the links of stuff that I've used for a couple of years so I know that the quality is there. You know, my full-time job, like I said, is buying and selling used cameras, and I just do this to kind of showcase um, kind of a, a glimpse into what it's like to, to do this full-time. So just a little bit of cleaning time, and we've got a camera that looks a lot nicer. Oh, well, let me get the lens cleaned up, too. Okay. So you can get, you can see it looks a lot nicer now cosmetically. Now hopefully it works and we didn't spend all that time cleaning for no payoff. So this camera uses the LPE5. There's not a battery in here. So let me grab one real quick. All right. Power's on. Yeah, let's try taking a few pictures. Lens has just a little bit of hesitation, and that's that's common with age. Sometimes a little bit of dust or grit can get in there. That um, may or may not affect autofocus. We'll see when we take a picture. Flash pops. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, autofocus is working fine. Flash is firing, and camera takes good pictures. So, so I've shot a lot with the T1i. Uh, I've made a video around some of my favorite lenses to use with the T1i, uh, and those include like the 50 millimeter prime lens, uh, 55 to 250, the 40 millimeter pancake, the 24 millimeter pancake. Um, there's a lot of cool lenses that are pretty affordable that will take your shooting experience with the T1i to a different level than just this kit 18 to 55. But this 18 to 55 can take some surprisingly good pictures. Um, I'm going to take this outside, pop some pictures on the screen, and get an idea of what I'm talking about. So when this camera was originally released, I think it was around a $500 plus retail price point. Uh, obviously, as technology has changed and advanced, the prices of used technology comes down normally, unless it's a special situation. The European model equivalent of the T1i is the 500D. So the value of the T1i or 500D uh, in the used market in the United States is going to be about $130 in good condition. Now, if you pair that with other lenses, then the value will go up proportionally, depending upon what the value of those lenses are. Next camera up, we've got a Nikon D3000. This came out, uh, I believe, a little bit before the T1i. 
And these were the two heavyweights that were battling against each other, Canon and Nikon. Sony was, I believe, number three. And then you had some other brands like Pentax and a couple others that made up uh, four, five, and six. T3000 is another camera I've sold a lot of over the years, 10 megapixel DSLR camera. It actually replaced the Nikon D40, uh, which I've sold a lot of as well. Um, it's kind of a no frills, uh, budget oriented DSLR camera. And the D3000 is similar in a lot of veins, in the, mainly in the fact that this body does not have a built-in autofocus motor. So the only lenses that will autofocus on this body are AFS Nikon lenses or equivalent. So if you have an older Nikon lens or a non-motorized Nikon lens, it'll still mount onto this Nikon F body, uh, but it won't autofocus. It will just be manual focus only. All right, let's take a look at condition. We've got some LCD wear, some scratches on the back here. Uh, pretty common with age, but otherwise cosmetically it looks pretty good and the lens glass looks great. Lens is moving smoothly. And we've got a memory card in there and no battery. This uses the Nikon ENL9 battery and I've got a couple of those over here. The placement. Throw it in does power on. We've got a little bit of a hazy color uh, over off to the left here. So let's try taking a few pictures and see what's going on there. It looks like it might just be a display issue. But what I'm going to do is take a few pictures indoors and then I'm going to run over with the memory card to the computer and we'll see if the discoloration shows up on the actual pictures taken. So I'll do that real quick and at the same time with this memory card uh, you can go to and utilize uh, software so we can get an idea of what the what the life is of this camera. So how many pictures have been taken with it? So that Sony that we the first Sony that we looked at had around two and a half thousand, and uh, this one I'm not sure how how many it's going to have. I think the shutter life on the D3000 is around 100k, so hopefully uh, well short of that. Based on the condition, I would think it would be under 20. So I'll go ahead and get that real quick and uh, be right back. All right, so, so some good news. The shutter count of this camera is just under 6,800. So plenty of life left in the shutter. Another piece of good news is that orangish color um, is not actually affecting the pictures, it's just on the display. I will go ahead and uh, take some pictures with this a little bit later and pop them on the screen so you get an idea of what the D3000 is capable of. And in terms of price, um, the value of this is going to be largely dependent upon the shutter count and condition like any camera. Um, and the value has actually gone up a little bit over the last few years. You're looking at a value of around $130 on this camera. And with that, we hit $1,145 in projected value. And the target again is $1,750. So we've got a ways to go, but we've still got a little bit less than a dozen cameras, I think, to go through. So everything's looking good on that front. Next camera, oh yeah, I have not seen one of these in a long time. It's a Sony Nex F3. And this is one of Sony's earlier mirrorless camera models, way, 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 like um, almost 10 years before the first A6, A6500 that we looked at. So this was, uh, I think the third or fourth generation of Sony's mirrorless camera line. And it is a mirrorless camera with the kit 18 to 55 millimeter lens. And it has a tiltable LCD, 180 degrees. And also shoots 1080 video. So there's a lot of other models that had a, uh, a hot shoe flash. This actually has a push button flash. Pops up like that and does a pretty adequate job actually. There's a memory card in there, but no battery. And the condition of this camera appears to be actually quite good. I do like the aesthetic look of this camera and it fits well in the hand. It's got this textured grip here. Let me put a battery in and the NPFW50 battery and let's see how this puppy works. Power's on and that looks good. 
So one thing with uh, older mirrorless cameras is oftentimes there's gonna be a little bit of dust in the sensor. So what you can use to clean that is either like a little air blower, the little black, uh, black and red ones if you've got those. Not pressurized air, just a little air blower. Uh, or if it's pretty bad, if it's kind of stuck on there, you can either use a dry or a wet sensor swab. And those are very inexpensive on websites like eBay. Typically you'll see that in pictures taken and I see it all the time on YouTubers videos. There's spots in the pictures and that's, that's generally sensor dust. And normally when you look at a white background, that's the easiest way to tell or something bright, you can see if there's any black spots. So that looks good. Let's pop the flash, see if the flash fires. Flash is firing and autofocus is working well. So this camera is in good shape. Um, We'll take this outside, we'll get some pictures taken with this camera as well. And I think you'll be surprised by what this little camera can do. Um, I've shot with this uh, when it originally came out, uh, what, 12 years ago? Um, and I believe I actually saw this at the CES trade show with Sony when I was working with them directly. I mean, kind of a bare bones camera, but does what it's supposed to do. Takes decent video, autofocus, eh, on video, not great. Uh, but for still picture shooting, uh, I've always been pretty pleased with this camera. And the value of the Sony Nex F3 uh, in good working shape, I'll get a shutter count a little bit later. I don't think it's going to be super high depend based on the condition of this. Um, but the value of this camera is going to be about $175 if you pair it with a charger and a memory card. Um, so that's a, that's a good one as well. So we've had all working cameras so far. Highly unusual if you've watched any of my videos before. This is the last camera from this box, and then we'll have that other box to go through as well. We've got a Nikon D3100 in kind of sus shape. It is missing the uh, USB door here. It's got quite a bit of wear. Um, missing the viewfinder cap. Has some dings around the corners, and it's missing the battery door. So we've got uh, quite a bit to go through here. And it's got the not original kit lens. It's got a regular Nikon 18 to 55 DX lens, non VR. So this isn't even the lens that originally came with. Curious. Let's see if I've got a battery door for this camera. I've got a bunch of battery doors here. Maybe 60 from a variety of cameras. Uh, a lot of these are older Canon and Nikon cameras because a lot of those uh, came with battery grips and a lot of the times if it came with a battery grip, people tend to lose the battery door. So I think I've got one in here. And the battery doors generally are pretty inexpensive. A lot of them on eBay are direct from China. Um, I try to get a US supplier if I can. And hopefully it powers on. Oh, powers on. Buttons have a fair amount of wear as well. This camera's definitely seen some use. And uh, whenever we check shutter in a little bit, my guess is it's up there. Uh, but more importantly, let's see if it takes pictures. We've got some dust and fuzz visible through the viewfinder. So it's probably on the focus screen or around it. And as I said before, normally that doesn't affect anything with the actual picture. No, it doesn't. Autofocus is working and the flash is firing. Despite the well-used condition of this camera, so I'm gonna go ahead and run over real quick. We'll grab the shutter. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna pop some pictures that I'm gonna take with this camera up on the screen so you can get an idea of what the D3100 with the kit lens is capable of. It's another camera that uh, I see all the time. I've sold over 100 of the D3100 in the last seven years. It's kind of a no frills camera, shoots okay video and better stills. Autofocus a little bit lacking, especially compared to Cameras currently available today. That's the biggest thing that you'll notice is that apart from excellent video capability on today's current generation offerings is the autofocus of today's cameras is just so much better than older DSLR cameras. But that being said, uh, as a first time camera or a camera just to take with you, these are still more than capable of producing very, very serviceable pictures. Hey, shutter count on this D3100 is just under 54,000. So that is a lot and it sounds like a lot, but the shutter count estimate, like I said, is around 100K for this. So should still be a fair amount of life left, but that will affect the value. So in super condition, 
The D3100, I would sell for over 150, 160. In this condition, uh, with a lot of the issues that we have here, if you pair it with the charger, you're looking at closer to 125 on this camera. And that wraps up this box. And this box is full of point shoot digital cameras. And these are all untested. So you never really know what you're gonna get. And I've had a couple comments lately on untested cameras on these videos, and yeah, they're a risk. And yes, it depends on how you buy them and where you buy them from, and the honesty of the seller you're buying them from. So over the years, I've developed a few suppliers that I just don't buy from anymore because I don't think they're being truthful with me. Um, and then I found some that I think are actually honest. Uh, it just has taken time to whittle that down and figure out kind of the risk reward structure that I'm comfortable doing and that may be different for you. Ooh, let's start with this. We've got a Canon PowerShot SX100 and I was in camera sales when this camera came out. So before I was a buyer, I was actually selling cameras. Canon PowerShot SX100 in silver, as well as all the uh, originally included accessories it looks like. I'll go ahead and uh, put that on the ground. We've got a USB cable, AV cable, instructions. And the box definitely adds some value. So if you see a camera in a box, normally that will add 10 to 20% in value depending on the camera. So I do try to keep those if I'm able to. Uh, it's an 8 megapixel 10x optical. Also has an SD, but no double A's. And most importantly, there's no and most importantly, there's no residue or battery corrosion in the double A tray. And that is an issue that I see often. And fortunately, a lot of the times, over 50% of the time, in fact, I'm able to get that cleaned up and get it into working condition. So let's power it on. See if this camera works. Powers on. Lens noisy. Uh, very common with this particular model, as well as most of Canon's PowerShot line. Even brand new out of the box. The display looks good. The flash is just a manual pop here. And let's try taking a picture. Picture took. Let's see if we can get that flash to fire. Flash fires. And the picture looks really quite good. So I've shot with this camera, like I said, when it was originally released, uh, I actually owned one. You know, it takes good pictures. Uh, they can be a little bit soft from my experience, especially when you get right out of the focal, uh, the main focal area into the outer edges of the image. Uh, they tend to get pretty soft, but in the right conditions with a lot of natural light, this camera does a good job. And when you're indoors, generally want to utilize that flash from my experience. And actually, before we get into value, I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and take this outside. We'll get some pictures taken with this. You get an idea of what this camera is capable of. Um, good little camera. And uh, when you pair it with the box and all of the originally included accessories, you're looking at a value in the $80 range on this. And I show we just crossed over $1,500 in projected value. So we get super close to that target. Canon PowerShot A95, a kind of a beefy five megapixel camera that uses compact flash cards and AA batteries. AA battery tray looks good. Power's on. We got the display. Uh-oh. So what are we looking at here? We've got a purple screen. Uh, mostly black with a little bit of pur purple wavy lines, and normally that's a faulty sensor. Okay, so unfortunately this is a camera that uh, appears to have a faulty sensor, and with that, there's no value here. The, if this was in good working condition, it would have a value in the $50 range. This is our first bust, and I'm just thankful that it took that long to get to a bust, frankly. Uh, I'll take it. I'll take a broken camera as long as those other nicer ones are working. Let's do this one some cool little point shoots in here. We've got an Olympus FE340, 8 megapixel 5x zoom camera. Came out a year or two after that Canon we were looking at. Uses the Olympus Li42 battery. And I've sold a lot of these as well. I think this uses XD, right? Yeah, XD picture card, not regular SD. Power's on, got a cute little dog that showed up there. Eee. <laughs> Back-to-back 
broken cameras. Uh, we've got a black screen of death here. So potentially another sensor issue or an issue with the connection internally, but uh, there is a black screen. And there's no viewfinder on here, so you're supposed to actually be seeing my hand waving, and it's just a black screen. So we've got another defective camera, and I'm not surprised given the age of this camera and the overall wear is pretty high. So uh, it just tends to happen with older cameras and older electronics in general. With age, they tend to deteriorate and break down. In good working condition with a charger, you're looking at a value of about 40 bucks here. We have a Canon PowerShot ELF 115. Condition of this one also looks a little iffy. Pretty heavy wear to the front body. How's the rear look? Rear looks okay, but I'm noticing a lot of separation on the top of the camera. That is not good. So normally that is a result of an impact mark or a missing screw. I'm not seeing any missing screws, so perhaps this was dropped at some point. Also, the lens zoom gets stuck whenever I'm just like moving it around. It should recess back to the middle section whenever you let go of the zoom toggle, and it's getting stuck. So there is a battery in there. Okay, Let's see if there's any juice left on that guy. It does power on. Lens glass is pretty heavily scratched. And the menu buttons don't work. Great. So we've got a camera that powers on and does nothing else. Uh, and or, or regardless, it has this broken zoom and the separation on the top. So again, not a working camera. This might have a little value because in good working condition, this camera is worth over a hundred bucks. So there may be a little bit of scrap value or someone that would be able to take this and use some of the parts for something else, or maybe even get it into working condition. Um, so I won't assign a value. It may have a little bit of standalone value in the used for parts section on eBay, um, but I'm not gonna put any value on that. Wow, we're on a bad streak here, guys. 0 for three on these last three. All right, next up. Oh, nice, uh, sweet. You rarely see purple cameras. So whenever I see a purple camera, get a little grin on my face. This is a Fujifilm FinePix Z37, and this is a camera that is very small, as you can see, very diminutive. Not the smallest camera ever made. Um, one of the smallest cameras ever made was the Nikon Coolpix S01, which is about, hmm, about there. It's about uh, that big. So a fair, fair bit smaller, and the entire back screen is just a touch screen. So this is quite small, and for someone with larger hands like myself, it just makes it look very, very tiny. And this is a camera that I have used and sold quite a bit of. The values have actually doubled in the last five years from where I used to sell this camera at. This used to be a camera that I would sell for 30 or $40, and now in good shape, especially in an unusual color like purple, uh, in good working condition, it sells for about double that. So let's go ahead and test this and see what we got going on. Oh, it has a memory card in there and a battery. Well, let's try it. So to turn the camera on, all you have to do is slide the front lens cover open and we get that cool turn on sound. Powers on. A little bit of lens noise, super common with this Fujifilm model and the Z33, which is very, very similar. So I like to go into force flash mode just to make, make the testing process a little bit quicker if I can. Flash fires and the camera looks good. So this is in good working shape. Uh, I, as I said before, I've used this camera quite a bit. Pretty small lens, needs a lot of light to take a good picture. Um, but if you're able to get the subject in focus, the picture quality is actually quite good. And the colors I've found to be pretty vibrant. Um, so this is a camera that despite its diminutive size, I would easily slip this into a pocket and go take some pictures with it. So pair this with a memory card and a charger, and you're looking at a value of about 80 bucks on this camera. That's really neat. How we broke our streak of three non-working cameras, thank goodness. All right, ooh, next up, we have a Panasonic Lumix, DMC ZS1 in silver. Uh, this was the first in the ZS line. They made the ZS8, uh, ZS15, ZS18, uh, a wide variety of Panasonic ZS models. And this is a fairly compact, kind of hyper-zoom 12X optical in a very small, slim body. 
Now there are some downsides when it comes to that, which we'll talk about if this camera is working or even if it's not here in a second. Uses the BCG 10 battery. There's not a battery in here. And I believe I've got a couple over here. Yep. Threw the battery in. This is a camera series that I really dearly love if it's in working condition, like I've said in a couple other prior videos, but so many of these older Panasonic Lumixes have issues that it's not a camera that I typically pick up in untested condition unless it's in a lot with a bunch of other cameras. So it does power on. That's a good step. The lens looks good. Uh, a common issue that you'll see here, it, along with other compact cameras that have larger optical zooms, is a lot of lens glass scratches because that front element um, moves in and out so much that if there's anything in there in the way, like a tiny piece of dirt or sand, it can get highly abrasive very quickly and scratch the glass. Okay, the lens moved out, but now it's not moving back in, it's stuck. It's literally not moving out at all, or moving back in at all. Let me try taking a picture and see if the picture works. Hey, the picture fires. <laughs> Okay, well, it can take a picture, but the lens is stuck. Let's try turning it off, and we'll try turning it back on. I'd say that doesn't bode well, but let's try going about halfway and then coming back in. <sighs> moving left on the toggle doesn't actually do anything, but moving the lens out will fully zoom it out, and then it never comes back in. Though There's clearly something going on with the zoom mechanism itself, this toggle. Um, and that's something that maybe someone is able to fix. So um, unfortunately for me, there's no value here. Um, in good working condition, this is a camera that normally sells in the 50 to $60 range, but I'm not gonna assign any value to this today. All right, we've got three left actually. Let's do, and they're all, well, two Canons and an Icon coming up. We have a Canon PowerShot SD300, pretty early point and shoot digital camera kind of in this all metal stainless body. Um, looks pretty cool. Condition looks okay. There's a little bit of wear to the LCD. And this uses the Canon NB4L battery. There's not one in here. Power's on, lens is noisy. Lens is moving in and out fine. Uh, and this is a camera that I've used a bunch and I really enjoy taking pictures with the SD300. And for a four megapixel camera, take a look at the pictures that I'll pop up that I'll, I'll, I'm gonna take with this in a little bit. I, I'm always pretty astounded by the picture quality that I'm able to get out of this little guy. Yeah, it looks, looks good. Given this, uh, this metal body, a lot of the times you'll have surface wear, you'll have uh, paint lettering rubbing off. Um, this one's actually in pretty good shape. So overall condition is good. And the value of this, if you pair it with a charger and a USB cable, you're looking at a value of about $75 on this camera. So still has some value and uh, it's still fun to shoot with after 20 years since its release. Two cameras left, I show we're at 1,680 in rough estimate of projected value, just shy of our target. But if either one of these is working, I think we'll be able to hit it. Let's start with this one. We've got a Canon PowerShot SX230. It's a 12 megapixel camera with a 14X optical. And at the time when this came out, uh, this was just after the SX210. Uh, this had one of the best optical zooms in a compact body that was on the market at the time. And I remember when this camera was released as well. Uh, also shoots in, I think, 720p video. Got a memory card, but no battery. And this uses the Canon NB5L battery, which looks similar to the NB4L, but a little bit skinnier. Uh, my success rate on SX210s, SX230s, honestly, is pretty low probably 50-50 for untested condition. So let's see if this powers on. When you power it on, the kind of interesting thing about this is the flash automatically pops up. And the thing that I've noticed with this camera throughout the years, I've sold dozens of this is lens scratches, very, very common. And if they're not deep enough, normally they won't affect the picture quality depending on the lighting conditions. Um, so let's go ahead and see what everything looks like here. Yeah, lens is moving in and out. So you can see just how much that moves in and out. 
And a camera like this gives you, even this camera was released 10 plus years ago, it gives you significant uh, coverage of optical zoom in comparison to today's cell phones. For a camera that you can easily stick into your pocket, you're able to get up close and personal uh, from like 10, 15 feet away, uh, pretty handy to have. So let's go ahead and try taking a few pictures, see if the flash is working and autofocus works. That looks good. Flash fires. And the pictures are looking good. So this was actually one of my favorite cameras to shoot with uh, back in the day when I used to use this camera more. Um, I'm gonna pop some pictures that I'll take here in a little bit up on the screen so you get an idea of what this camera is uh, capable of taking. Um, really surprises me, honestly, every time I shoot with this camera uh, because the colors pop, um, you'll see way, way better focus than uh, prior generations of Canons. And even though it's only a 12 megapixel camera, uh, you're able to print out pretty decent sized pictures if you so desire. The newer versions would be like the Canon SX260, SX280, also great cameras. And the value of the SX230 uh, in good shape with a SD card, USB cable and charger, you can have value of about a hundred bucks. Um, and that puts us right over our target. Uh, and we've got one camera left. So everything's looking good on that front. Last dab camera. Nikon Coolpix S6000. If there's one Digicam that I really enjoy shooting with, maybe even more than the SX230, it's probably this one. And uh, hopefully it's working so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. Uses the Nikon ENL12 battery. Powers on, little bit of a ding on the top. Glass is good. It's got a 7X optical, uh, 14 megapixel. And uh, let's see, oh yeah, that's smooth. Okay, well, a little noisy, not, not too bad though. Let's try taking a picture. So in terms of color reproduction, accuracy, and just overall fun that I have shooting with the camera, um, I'm gonna take some pictures outside with this as well. Really a joy to shoot with. And for whatever reason, I found this camera to be startlingly sharp and super quick to focus. Um, so if you can find one of these in good shape, I really enjoy shooting with it. Video, it does shoot, I think 720p. Uh, I'm not in it for video on most of the cameras and I don't talk about video that often because most of what I'm focused on is just still photography. Really, really cool camera. So value of this camera uh, in the used market in the United States is gonna be about a hundred bucks. So that's it, that is the last camera. Um, as always, really appreciate you joining me for the ride. Don't forget to get out there, have some fun, enjoy life, and take some pictures along the way.